Hey folks, Gnostic Antinatalist here. I hope you're doing well. So this video is a response video and a shout out to Mark Antinatalist for his recent video. I would rather have the company of an honest pessimist versus the company of a lying, smiling optimist. And this is a very significant topic and I think one well worth discussing more at length. So from my perspective, as you all know, I consider myself a realistic, optimistic antinatalist. So I consider realism, or rather a realistic awareness of life, to not necessarily lead to pessimism in terms of how you think or process things per se. Uh, that's why I don't classify myself personally as a pessimist. Now, others may consider me a pessimist regarding um, being one of the people who exposes the horrors of reality and is vividly aware of how horrific this impositional reality, in fact, actually is, especially to others far more so than myself. Um, and the, the awareness of that is there for sure. So, yes, technically, someone could say that I'm a pessimist when it comes to the nature of impositional reality as it actually is imposed on us. It's definitely not even remotely ideal. In fact, it's so far in the opposite direction of ideal that it's truly horrific in nightmarish ways. Um, and the more aware you are of it, the more nightmarishly depressed and suicidal and in absolute agony daily you are actually in comparison to how much awareness you have of it. Right? So, uh, I'm going to do another video coming up soon called The Damage Has Already Been Done, related to this topic also. But in this video, I want to touch more on this particular point. So, Mark Antonatalist, you asked me uh, in the comments, what is the connection between realism and sadism? So, one of my comments there is that we are all either sadistic, parentheses, realistic, or oblivious, parentheses, optimistic or some combination of these two. Most humans, most of the time, are like 50-50. They're halfway between being oblivious and sadistic. Now, when I say oblivious, I don't mean unaware of everything, just completely not having a clue as to anything going on. What I mean when I say oblivious is you're only aware of, or predominantly aware of, the pleasure you're experiencing in that moment, and you're tuned out from the reality, the horror reality of even that pleasure you're engaging in and its direct connection to all these agonies and miseries to others real time. So everything from your video games, as you're playing a video game, doing your hobbies, doing artwork, having sex, having romance. If you are vividly aware enough of reality and what's going on here, you're going to see real time as you're doing those things, how horrifyingly torturous your actions are in connection to all the pains and agonies that are happening to all living beings real time right now. Okay. So the thing is you have to be like, you literally have to be oblivious to some extent to that, to be able to cope and to not be locked up in a mental institution because you literally, you would be dropping to your knees right now as you, as I speak, as you're listening to this video, in tears of agony, you'd be completely depressed, completely suicidal, 24-7 all the time. If you were vividly all the time aware of the actual degree of horror and torment and sadism and just exploitation and just, just how truly insanely evil all of this is, including the things you yourself engage in daily, against your will, by the way, right? And your awareness of it being against your will, compounding that awareness. So it's like a domino effect. If you're aware of it's against your will, you're doing evil things against your will. And that compounds, you're aware of that, and it spirals, okay? It's called spiraling mentally. So if you're not spiraling mentally with that awareness of horror after horror after horror in this, in this cycle in your brain that, that leads you to not be able to even stand up, you just collapse on the floor in tears of agony and anguish as to the horror of this, if that's not actually happening to you, you are for sure a hundred percent guaranteed oblivious to some extent. And it's good that you are oblivious to some extent of the pains and horrors that you yourself are involved in against your will inflicting on others. 
And the fact that it is against your will, but you're still inflicting out on others is exactly what would cause you to collapse to your knees as an empathic person. That specifically. So you see what I'm saying? You either have to voluntarily be tuned out to it to some extent, which is good. You should tune out to it to some extent, at least, right? Or you have to be by force blissfully unaware of it, right? So natalists, they're either blissfully unaware, they're oblivious to the horrors that they're directly connected to and engaging in. That's the main problem. They're basically too oblivious, right? Whereas the problem with antinatalists and ephilists, we tend to be too aware most of the time. And we're not, we're not oblivious enough to it. That's what causes our depression and anguish and misery if we don't purposefully tune out and make ourselves oblivious to it. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's literally just deciding which ratio you're going to have a live within the groove of. So you're going to basically every day, you're going to be like, okay, how much I, am I going to tune my thoughts and awareness into the horrors that I'm directly connected to against my will, right? And if you're able to tune into those horrors against your will and not fall to your knees and collapse and agonize tears over it, then you're to some extent sadistic because if you're able to be aware of it and not collapse on the floor instantly at the horror of it, then it means you're to some extent, to some extent you're okay with being indirectly by force of circumstances involved in causing pain to others, as long as you're mostly experiencing pleasure. So you're sadistic to some extent. It doesn't mean you're sadistic to like psychopathic or murderous or criminal levels. It just means there's some baseline degree of sadism in you that you're not necessarily recognizing is there or acknowledging is there, right? You're just trying to deny the sadism is, sadism, sadism is there. But you're much better off acknowledging that, yes, I am sadistic to this baseline degree. It is sadism. It's just a very mild version of sadism, Okay. Because a lot of times when people say sadism, they think it always has to be the extreme version of, okay, you're a criminal, you're, you're specifically relishing inflicting pain and torment on others. No, that's not necessarily, that's definitely not what's going on in, as an antinatalist or an ephilist. That's not how your psychology is seeing it, obviously. Your psychology is seeing it from the perspective that, okay, my intentions are good. I wish this world wasn't this way. I wish I could just engage in pleasure without it inflicting pain on others. But that's not the reality of this world. So you are to various degrees tuning yourself out to the, to the degree of horror you're involved in towards others. You are because you have to be like, like what I'm saying, that's what hobbies are. They're literally coping is tuning you out from the horrors you're inflicting on others. That's what it is. That's literally what you're doing. You're, you're making yourself oblivious to some extent. And I'm saying that is a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you're, oblivious in the sense that you're unaware that existence is going on or that things are happening. It just means you're tuned in mostly or predominantly to pleasures at those time frames, and you're tuned out from the, the broader reality of the pain connected to it. That's all. So when I say oblivious, I don't mean that you're unaware that reality is still happening. You're just to some extent tuned out from the noise of the horror of it all. You basically just put earmuffs on to the screams of agony of the kid dying right now as I do this video of starvation with nobody helping him. Your earmuffs are on to some extent. Your brain is still aware it's going on, but you're tuned out to some extent. And this is the key word for antinatalists to remember. You're oblivious to some extent because you have to be. Or you're sadistic to some extent because you have to be in order to exist in this world. You have to be a combination of both sadistic and oblivious to some extent. That's literally what life is. It's this back and forth. It's this combination. It's this ratio of sadism or obliviousness. So absorption and pleasure tuned out from the agonies you're inflicting on others or tuned in to the agony you're inflicting on others and feeling misery from that. And therefore, it's also sadistic, you guilt tripping yourself and finding some pleasure that, okay, it's, it's right or it's okay or it's proper for me to feel a sense of empathy and agony. What is that, though? What is you feeling? It's, it's you guilt tripping yourself to some extent in acknowledgement that I'm connected to the horrors of others and you feel bad about that. But you feeling bad in and of itself is bad for your health and physiology. That sensation of I feel bad in and of itself is by itself also a type of sadism because it's self-inflicted sadism, right? It's creating a justification in your brain why you should feel bad to some extent. Or if that's not what's going on, it's the other type of sadism where you're having to justify why you shouldn't feel bad because you're being forced to harm others against your will. You see what I'm saying? Either way, you're having to justify something that is sadistic. 
And because of my brain works that I can compartmentalize things, I can be insanely vividly aware of all this and then close that section of my brain off and tune into this other section. Like little, literally my brain works like a bunch of boxes, right? Okay. So it's like, there's this box. I'm vividly aware of all this stuff we talk about of the horrors of reality, everything else. That's one box of awareness. Okay. If I open that, okay, there it is. I'm collapsing on my knees. I'm in tears. I'm in agony. So I just close that box. Okay. I'm aware of what's in the box, but I'm just focusing on other boxes. I'm opening the other box where the pleasure is coming out from like that. Right. But all these boxes are there in my brain and my awareness. It's just which box am I opening and which boxes am I keeping closed? It's not that it's not that at any point there's any lack of awareness of how much horror I'm connected to in terms of other living beings. So there's another video I'll do on this topic called the um the ant colony in the log dilemma, the burning ant colony dilemma, basically. Is it's a video I'm gonna talk about. Um because it's an instance I actually ran into firsthand when I was camping recently. It, it, it actually, I was like, holy shit, this is like literally real time exactly what I've been talking about this whole time. Where basically you're having to make this decision, okay, which type of sadism am I going to engage in? Am I going to move the log away from the fire because I need to burn the log and clear the space? But in spite of that, am I just going to move it aside so the ants don't get burned up? Or am I going to piecemeal the log, burn it gradually, force the ants out of their home? Like... Or am I just going to leave the log in the wild and not burn that particular log at all? What am I going to do, right? Like, it's basically, uh, you're just deciding which one of these things you're going to do, right? And if you leave the log in the wild, the ants are going to for sure die via some other means anyway, right? Death by other insects or whatever versus being burned alive in the fire in the log, right? So I'm going to do a whole separate video on that, um, but it's, it's very relevant to this particular topic, okay? So all of us like to believe I like to believe as much as anybody that my good intentions or what I consider good intentions are not some variation of obliviousness to the actual scope of this horror. But in fact, they actually are. They really are some version or variation of obliviousness to the real scope of how horrifying this thing is, right? So this is why I keep talking about this principle over and over again. We're literally, once we're aware of this reality and what it is, all we have left to do is decide how we're going to go about our villainy and which type and how much obliviousness are we going to flood our life with? How much are we going to tune our brain out from the horrors of this and live in blissful happy land? Right. And how much are we going to maintain awareness of it? Thus maintain that certain amount of sadism because we're aware of our connection to the horrors that we're engaging in here. Right. Sadism to some extent, keywords, some extent, not, not the worst versions of it, but, a mild version of it, right? Because we're having to, we're ha what are we having to do? We're having to mentally do gymnastics as, okay, okay, I'm going forward and continuing to do the living, eating, breathing thing in this world. And that's connected to all these horrors. So you deciding to do that is you deciding that it's worth or it's okay, the horrors and inflictions on others due to it not being your choice to be here, Right. But the reality of it is, if you see fully deep into this, either way, whether it's your choice or not to have been here, that's still you inflicting horrors on others, right? So this topic is so incredibly essential for people to understand in all of its vivid details. Because once you understand the scope of this horror, you actually, you can only come to one specific conclusion, or I should say three specific conclusions, thus the philosophical triangle. And I suggest you watch that video if you haven't yet. So you're going to conclude one of the points of that triangle. You're either going to become an all out ethelist of the attempted, at every moment, you're basically, your ideal is always to have all life, all sentience eliminated as much as possible to eliminate both pains and pleasures connected to pains, right? Entirely. Or you're going to become a perpetual pleasurist where your focus is constantly on separating out pleasure from pain. And this is exactly what I'm suggesting in this video is that the perpetual pleasurist psychology is you're purposely knowingly 
making yourself oblivious to the horrors to various degrees because you have to that you literally have to do that in order to promote and keep engaging in a perpetual pleasuristic ideology. You have to, you have to do that in order to keep going technologically in the direction of greater pleasure, minimization of pain. You have to be oblivious to the pains that you're involved in, in the course of developing those technologies. Cause if you don't, you you'll never get there. Right. It's, it's a bloodbath getting there, even getting to the point of a far more idealistic society. It's a bloodbath getting there. And so you have to be tuned out to that to some extent, because if you don't, you can't function. If you're not tuned out to that, you collapse on your knees on the floor and you can't even move. Okay. Right. So you have to tune out to it. If you don't, you can't function. <laughs> and so this is basically what's happening is that um, until you understand these parameters very clearly, and you keep guilt tripping yourself every time you tune out to some extent, like, no, I should be more aware of the horrors. I, I need to not be oblivious. Well, that's the people that keep, keep experiencing chronic depression and chronic agony because they can't tune themselves out to it effectively. That's why they keep seeing depressed. So what's the sadism there? The sadism is you are inflicting more depression on yourself than you would feel otherwise if you were tuned out to it like the natalists are. And the natalists on their point of the triangle, they're deciding that the pain and pleasure together existing together is worth it, right? They're, they're considering that the torturous pains are worth the blissful, the pleasures of others, right? They're genuinely considering it worth it. So three, you're going to end up going to one point of that, the philosophical triangle when you realize the full scope of the horrors here, or you're going to predominantly go towards one point or the other. Okay. You're going to move away from center basically. And it's going to be based on how you're wired physiologically and otherwise, which corner of the triangle you you jump to basically. Okay. So in the course of talking about this, it's like, what I'm saying here is that I'm not saying people are stupid or anything like that. What I'm saying is that the majority of antinatalists are either knowingly or unknowingly oblivious to this fact of their own sadism, basically. And I'm saying that's a good thing. It's good to be oblivious to it to some extent. It's not a bad thing. It's good to be tuned out to it. <laughs> it's really bad, actually, to be tuned in all the way to how sadistic we are individually because you can't function when you're aware of that. Like, okay, and I'm saying this as someone from my perspective. I'm extremely empathic. I, oh, I consider myself extremely empathic. I feel for others. I feel intensely a lot. Like, I, I can't shake it off my consciousness Everything that I'm doing that's connected to someone else's pain, even though it's inadvertent and I, I'm never intending that, obviously, I'm aware that it's sadistic still, though. I'm st I'm aware of that. It's like I, it, it doesn't leave my awareness, folks. OK, and I'm very good at not being unaware of things or remaining or staying aware of things. OK, so I've realized my, I've literally had to purposefully make myself oblivious to a lot of it. I've had to. Because that's literally all you can do, folks. You know, as a certain threshold, you just become aware of all of it all at once, constantly, 24-7. And you, you literally collapse on the floor. You can't function at all when you are aware of it all. So you're coping your hobbies. That's you tuning out from it. You have to do that. <laughs> okay? So this is why I say paradise states are literally states of maximal obliviousness to the existence of the horror and the damage that's already been done. Okay? What are you oblivious to? You're oblivious to the damage that's already been done, both before you appeared in this world and ongoing as you're in this world. In a paradise state, the only way you would experience maximum happiness is if you have literally no awareness or almost no awareness of the existence of pain, even as a potential, of the existence of exploitation, even as a potential. You have to be completely tuned out from that shit to be even remotely in what would be considered a paradise-like state. Most humans, most of the time, are 50% sadistic, 50% optimistic, give or take, right? 60, 40, you know, 70, 30. It's somewhere in the middle, right? You're partially oblivious and partially sadistic. And the awareness of how sadistic we are is what's eating at us and fucking with our heads as antinatalists and ephilists. When you're aware enough, you're aware of your own involvement in the horrors. And that is what fucks with your head more than anything else. Far beyond just looking at the world, the world situation itself is bad. You see, oh shit, I myself am contributing to this shit show directly. Holy fucking shit. That's what occurs to you as a really, really, really fucking deep thinker and really, really, really deep feeler. Okay. 
And this is why I suggest most people are thinking and feeling up to a certain threshold. And beyond that, it's, it's fucking nightmare land or completely tuned out blissful fairy tale land. It's one or the other, right? At a certain threshold, you have to jump into one or the other. You enter into nightmarish depression and suicide, or you jump into fairy tale land, cope land, tuning out obliviousness land. It's one or the other. There's no third option here, folks. So when I'm saying being a lover and a fighter, I'm talking about the fact that you're aware of the horrors of this. The damage has already been done. Nothing will ever fix the damage that's already been done. So literally all you can do is purposefully immerse yourself in obliviousness to the horrors, working to maximize the pleasures and minimize the pains. But none of that, no matter how great of a thing we can achieve in life, no matter what paradise states we can create or manifest or immerse in, it's never under any circumstances going to eliminate the horrors that have already occurred. And that is my topic for the next video. So please do, please continue staying oblivious to a lot of these things. And heck, you're actually better off not fully grasping what I'm saying here. And I'm telling you this honestly, you're better off not fully having this register in this video, what I'm saying. You're better off remaining tuned out from what I'm getting at in this video. You are. And it's good to stay oblivious to it because it's fucking horrifying to be aware of this shit, okay? And that's why I say at a certain point, once you get past the, the max bleak pill, and I've been there, you get to the point of Gnostic antinatalism, right? That's where you get. After the bleakest of all bleak pills, you get to either suicide immediately right then and there, or you get to Gnostic antinatalism. As you're, and I'm not talking about my channel specifically. I'm talking about you come to that kind of a conclusion, basically right? That's what happens. That's what occurs. Okay. So, or you don't, or you just voluntarily embrace sadism and become a natalist on purpose, fully embracing the sadism thereof, or you become an ethelist all out and embrace the sadism of desire to eliminate all sentient experiences, including pleasurable ones entirely as your focus, which in and of itself is its own kind of sadism folks. Okay. They're all sadistic psychologies. All right. So sentience is sadistic and or oblivious. That's that's what we're dealing with here, okay? And it's good that most antinatalists are not aware of this or able to process this fully. It's good. It's it's a beneficial thing that most antinatalists and ethelists do not fully process this all the way. That's a healthy thing. If you do process what I'm saying here and it fully registers to you, please purposefully jump into oblivious land because you're going to notice that, holy shit, this is a really good point. I literally have to jump into being coming oblivious to this again. You do. And I'm telling you, you should. You should be oblivious to what I'm saying to some extent. You should. Please do. <laughs> okay? Because that's what's going to bring you back into Copeland or beyond Copeland into a happy, joyful life. Okay? And so if you think really deep enough or feel deep enough about what I'm saying here, you'll get it. It'll all register. It'll go off like a light bulb in your head and you'll be like, Holy shit. Okay. Which point of the triangle am I jumping in? Perpetual pleasurism, ethylism or natalism, right? Which one? And you're going to be like, okay, which type of obliviousness do I need to jump into psychologically and physiologically to get out of this hellish awareness of this so that I don't commit fucking suicide right now today. Okay. You're going to immediately, that will be what floods through your consciousness. So please jump into an awesome, sexy, pleasure filled form of obliviousness, because that's what you should do. That's how you overcome and escape sadism. Okay. That's how <laughs> it is obliviousness. That's how you escape. Okay. Call it the sacred delusion. Call it the sacred, whatever you want. Right. And if that's not your jive, just make sure you don't maintain too much awareness of the horrors of this reality and the full scope of it. Because if you do, you can't function if you do that. Okay. You can still function if you maintain awareness of the horrors to like a certain extent. I mean, you can even get up to the point of like 80 to 90% of the where of the horrors, you know, you'll be insanely fucking depressed, but you'll still be able to live and not kill yourself. Whereas if you get to the point of like a hundred percent awareness of it, you can feel nothing but instant right then and there suicidal tendencies 24 seven. That's all you can feel if you're at a hundred percent awareness of the horrors of it all. Okay. So you, for sure, if you're able to listen to this video and not commit suicide right now, you're literally for sure at bare minimum, you have 10% of obliviousness to the actual horror of this reality, at least that. And I'm glad you do. It's good to maintain at least a little bit of obliviousness to it. Please maintain that 
do not go into 100% awareness of it mode. Don't. Please don't. That's not good. It's not a good place to be. That's suicide land. That's nightmare depression land 24-7. Okay? That's what that is. 100% awareness of the reality of this is, is instant, immediate, suicidal land. That's what that is. Okay? Being aware of the scope of this world and how horrifying it is, but not necessarily being 24-7, like, attuned 100%. To every micro misery you're inflicting and connected to towards others, that's the 10% of obliviousness that's still not active in your thinking or awareness. And it's good that it's not. I'm not, it's not a bad thing. It's really, 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 really fucking good. You're oblivious to all those micro horrors you're engaging in all the time. It's a good thing. Do not ever let that amount of obliviousness go. Don't, okay? I'm oblivious right now to the horrors that I'm engaging in, even in the course of doing this video, folks. And it's a good thing that I am. Okay? So I hope this makes sense, and I hope this is not too confusing. But at a certain point, it actually is good if it's too confusing, because that'll ensure that a certain amount of obliviousness to this reality is maintained in your awareness. And I would honestly rather have people be confused and stay oblivious to some extent at least, however small, then fully understand this and fall into nightmare suicide land. Honestly, I would rather that be the case. Okay. So with that, I will talk to you soon in the next video.